Despite being the archetypical real robot franchise, Gundam still have the tendency to be relatively untouchable or extremely durable. So while there are many great examples of mass production units damaging Gundams, like this Ag guy, Grunts straight up destroying a Gundam was much rarer, but some went the extra mile and actually managed to pull it off. The poor guy. He was so close. So he totally deserves an honorable mention. Warning, due to the nature of this video, it will contain major spoilers for Gundam Sea Destiny, Gundam Sea Destiny Stargazer, 0080, and 0089 The Novelization, along with a minor spoiler for 0083. But before we go on with the video, we should talk about sponsors. And I know that you're probably tired of hearing about Raid Shadow Legends, if at this point you still don't know that it's a free turn-based RPG done right with over 400 champions you can collect and customize, then you've probably been living under a rock the size of Axis. And I also know that for a lot of people, mobile gaming just ain't your thing. So for you, there's now also Raid on the computer. Which means that my Crusader can smart. now go Crusade on a true gaming machine. Now excuse me while I go beat this dragon. But what hasn't changed are those amazing graphics, the features you all know by now, and the heaps of free stuff that they give to new players if you sign up with my link, a hundred thousand silver, two clan boss keys, ten mystery shards, and the adjudicator. A champion with a great... personality? But now, back to the list. This time the first one is a freebie, because Gundam Unit 1, also known as the Zephyrontes, definitely got taken out by the least grunty mass production unit on this list, Shi Megara House Gelguk Marine Commander type. While the vanilla Zephyrontes is now mostly remembered as a ground mobile suit, it was actually totally capable of operating in space with one small caveat. Certain adjustments had to be made for it to be spaceworthy. But since the first round of testing was to be carried out on Earth, these adjustments had not yet been calculated. So when Zephyrontes was forced to go into space in pursuit of the stolen Gundam Unit 2, a small rivalry came up between the pilot, Ensign Koiraki, and the Gundam's main engineer, Nina Purpleton. Well then I have a suggestion. Why don't you just take Lieutenant Burning's jam out for some training, Mr. Self-Confidence? Forget that! Any spare time I have, I'll spend working on this. Uh-huh. Poor Ensign Keith, all alone out there. And by the way, your calculations are all wrong. However, before either of their calculations could be put to the test, their ship, the Albion, came under attack by the Shima fleet. And instead of using an available gym custom, Ko decided that he'd risk his life on his calculations and launched. Unfortunately for him, his calculations were wrong and the Zephyrontes was almost uncontrollable. The only thing that kept him from being killed by Shima was his Gundam's incredible armor and a last minute intervention by South Burning in his gym custom. Sure, the Zephyrontes wasn't completely destroyed, but it was in no shape to fight anymore. What have I done? Oh God, what have you done to my Gundam? and needed to be shipped off to Anaheim for an extensive overhaul. This then resulted in the Zephyrontes Full Burner, a purely space version of the regular Zephyrontes. Next up, we have the Chaos Gundam being taken out by a squad of Murasames, with the tide of the Second Bloody Valentine War slowly turning against the Earth Alliance, and their ideals getting more and more radical. Support for the Earth Alliance was quickly declining, especially in Western Eurasia. The ensuing unrest and resentment made it easy for Zaf to gain a foothold in the area. For the Alliance, this was unacceptable, and they responded with just the kind of violence that caused this resentment in the first place. A small task force consisting of the brand new X-1 Destroy, piloted by Stella Loisier, the Chaos Gundam, piloted by Sting Oakley, and a single Wyndham, piloted by Neo Roanoke, were sent to deal with the Zaf forces garrisoned at Berlin, leveling the city and several others in the process. However, things went south when they were intercepted by the Archangel. First, Neo's Wyndham was shot down by Kira's freedom, and then Sting's Chaos was targeted by three Murasames, after he realized that they had no choice but to withdraw. He never got the chance, and soon thereafter, the Lone Destroy was also taken out. 
Staying in the cosmic era, we have the blue duel piloted by Moody Holcroft, who died one of the most gruesome deaths in Gundam. Moody, along with her teammates Sven Kalbayong in The Strike Noir and Shams Koza in The Verde Buster, was assigned to defending the aforementioned destroyed Gundam during its travels. For this mission, they would use their machines to the best of their design purposes. The heavy but powerful Buster would stay on the landship, providing covering fire, the Strike would use its speed and agility to engage the enemy, while Moody and her duel formed the last line of defense. Unfortunately, a combination of overwhelming odds and low visibility due to the snow led to Baku's landing direct hits on her machine, taking out an arm and a leg. And before any of her teammates could react, a trio of Baku hounds jumped her and began to brutally and slowly maul her to death. If I saw one of my teammates killed like that, I think I might start yelling for a blue and pure Earth as well. And Stargazer's Gundam death toll doesn't end there. During the following mission, Shams and his Verde Buster were the next ones to be destroyed. Also by a mass production machine, the Civilian Astray. And as its name would suggest, this machine wasn't even meant for combat in the first place. Shams was generally laid back and was able to keep a cool head during combat, but this all changed after Moody's death. He was overcome by rage and when he heard about their next mission, he knew that he could get his revenge on those damn coordinators. They were to steal the DSSD's new mobile suit from a neutral research colony and were allowed to kill anyone who got in their way. And to Shams the Light, there were many that did. He also followed out his commander's orders to destroy the colony without a second thought. However, his reckless firing quickly depleted the energy of his machine and despite repeated calls to return, he never did. Then we have the matchup that you were all probably expecting, the NT-1 Alex being destroyed by Amir Zaku. The history of the Alex can basically be summed up by a series of disasters while being pursued by Zeon Cyclops team. First discovered by Zeon on the Federation's Arctic base, the Cyclops team set out to destroy it. While they wiped out most of the defending gyms, the Alex itself was able to escape in a nick of time to Site 6 for further testing. But unbeknownst to them, the Cyclops team was in hot pursuit. They infiltrated the colony and began Operation Rubicon. Their goal was to either capture or destroy the Alex, and should they fail, the whole colony would be nuked. Again, they managed to destroy most of the defending units, but again the Alex survived this time by being commandeered by its test pilot, Christina McKenzie. During the mission, all of the Cyclops team's members were killed, except for Bernard Wiseman. And with only a damaged Zaku 2 Kai left, he just wanted to run away, but he couldn't. During his stay in the colony, he befriended a kid named Al and even found himself a girlfriend, Chris. Bernie knew that taking the Gundam head-on was suicide, so instead he devised a plan to lure the Gundam into a trap, and it worked like a charm. He took out the Gundam, but at the cost of his own life, in his mind, saving Al, Chris, and the rest of the colony. But not only did he have no idea who he was actually fighting against, he also had no idea that moments before he launched, the ship carrying the nuke surrendered to the Federation, making this battle completely meaningless. And finally, we have Armor Race RX-783 getting destroyed by Leroy Gilliam's Rig Dom. And in case you're confused, don't worry. This all happened in the novelization of Gundam, where the events of the One Year War played out slightly differently. Instead of being upgraded with a magnetic coating, the RX-782 was destroyed in battle. And so the RX-783 was assigned to Amro as his replacement. In this new machine, he would phase off against Char and his Rigdom squad in a very confusing battle. 
A long story short, Char wanted the help of the White Base, and when Amro became aware of this, he tried contacting them. Unfortunately, two of Char's subordinates, Leroy Gilliam and his partner, didn't get the memo. Instead, when they saw the Gundam return to the White Base, they thought this moment was perfect to snipe the Gundam with their beam bazookas. And so ended Amro's stint in the RX-783, leaving behind a devastated Char who just saw his plans blown up by his own inability to control his subordinates. And that is all for this rather depressing video. Let me know in the comments down below if I missed any Gundams being destroyed by mass production units and if you think that the first freebie on this list was a valid entry or not. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more similar content in the future. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters and to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all next time.